Marvellous. OK, so the topics of conversation really follow on from what David's just outlined, because um, from our perspective, more data is available each month. Um, and there is a variety of ways in which to use that data to boost the efficiency and profits of the vending operators. Uh, but also, the, we do need to talk about, and we'll be talking about this morning, about managing uh, data, and especially in respect of the DRS and the extended pr producer responsibility. And as David has just outlined, this is not just about using data for the benefit of your business, it's also using data for the increasing requirements that need to be provided, the data that needs to be provided for government bodies. So all in all, data is a topic of conversation, how you use it and how it can benefit your business. Now, just as a, a, a little introduction without spending too much time on this bit, five years ago at a regional AVA meeting, I was invited to present. And at that stage, what we did was look at global players, people like Google and Amazon and how they use data in their business. And we looked at that globally in terms of data and how it's used and how much of it is used. And then we looked at the UK, uh, across the UK, not just vending, but then looked at vending in the UK and how the vending industry used data five years ago. And it won't surprise you to find that there has been dramatic change. So when we looked five years ago at the global companies, it wasn't about how they use data, but it was about how much of their data they use and what they use it for. And for those of you who are IT literate, uh, more so than me, hopefully, uh, and uh, are users of Amazon and, and Google and everything else, you'll know that from the number of adverts that pester you regularly, how much they use the data and what they use it for. Um, but that, that description five years ago took us nicely into the UK vending market and what vending operators in the UK used for data, what data was available, and basically how it benefited their business. And I just want to use this for now because um, we are moving very fast, in my opinion, from where we used to be to where companies are now. And the description of DIY, semi-automated and fully automated is a broad brush description. And forgive me for that, but in the space of 20 minutes, uh, that's where we're going to get to really. But if I try and explain it, the DIY uh, version of, of vending operating is still with route management on Excel, operators going to the machines with a van full of stock, opening the machines up, checking what they need, going back to the van uh, and so on, collecting the stock, perhaps filling in paper reports still of stock inserts in the machines and using Excel for a lot of the business or using a, 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 an accounting system to run the business. I think the world's moved on, as you'll see in a minute, certainly for SB Software's customers, that's true, and I think it is elsewhere as well, where there's now a move towards a semi-automated uh, version of vending, where the operator might still go to the machine twice, once to check it, once to, to then fill it, but they're using apps such as Nyax MoMA app or the SB software product called Data Key, which at the visit to the machine allows you to automate some of the things like the readings and what stock is required to fill the machines. And that's the semi automated version where you still need to go to the machine. However, in the last five years, telemetry and cashless has moved the market forward has moved the method of operation forward. And we are now, I think, entering a stage of fully automated vending. So that means that the van pulls up outside the site. Uh, the operator syncs their phone or actually just looks at the phone and the stock fills 
for that site, for each machine on that site, are automatically transferred to the phone. So the operator, without going to the machine, can pick the stock. I'll come back to that in a minute because there's even more advanced versions of that. But actually can pick the stock at the van and in a single walk, go to the machine, fill it, take the readings, come back to the van and they are on their way. What has caused that revolution? Because I think it is revolutionary in the last few years. Well, this chart, I, I love charts with very few words on. Um, this one, how has cashless and telemetry grown? The arrow may give you a hint as to the direction of travel. Here are some figures. Five years ago, when I was presenting this a similar pre presentation, only 12% of vending machines had cashless or telemetry. The AVA census, as you can see, 65% of vending machines now have cashless and telemetry. And if you add in uh, the, the, the sort of data key connectivity, the the Vionet smart vending connectivity, smart machines and so on, over 75% of machines in the UK have automated data collection. That is a massive change. And some supplementary information, just because data is always always uh, uh, something of uh, um, an art in in the uh, vending industry. But just so it proves that we're all in the same boat, if you like. Ninety three percent of SB software clients use data keys. So they're the, the SB software clients. And I'm sure others are the same are already in the semi automated uh, range of of machine of machine operating. And the 7% of the others are engaged on trials. So basically, anybody within SB software is already past the DIY stage of, of vending operating and is into semi-automated. Uh, and just supporting the 65% and 75% figures above, Cantaloop do say that 67% of all vending machine sales, rather than how many machines have got uh, cashless and telemetry, 67% of the vending machine sales were actually cashless last year. And completing the mix, if you like, so going back to uh, the fully automated uh, and just a figure to show you within uh, SB software and customers using Venn Manager, 42% of all machines use telemetry integration. So bearing in mind that Within the estate will include hot drinks machines, some of which do not have cashless uh, because they've got free vend. Then you can see that the amount of telemetry and cashless information being used has grown sig significantly. So the output is more cashless and telemetry than ever before, more opportunity to use the data than ever before. So how do we go about that? What do we use it for? What can we use it for in vending? Excuse me a second. OK, I've just highlighted five five areas. The first one is brand performance. Um, and do you want to show to your customers the top 20 brands in your business, the top 40 brands, the best selling brands in that particular customer of yours uh, estate? Do you want to show the bottom 20 so you know which ones to take out? Do you want to look at non selling spirals or slow selling spirals? That's all available through using the data that's coming in from your cashless and telemetry units or from your semi automated uh, data collection. Route optimization has changed significantly in the last two to three years. Fixed routes are moving to visit on demand. So you actually visit the sites and the machines when they're required, not just because you go every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And actually, we now move into an area of, of automated fleet routing so that rather than relying on knowledge within uh, somebody's head uh, who's been in the business years, actually, you can have it automated and do your fleet routing, your routing um, automatically once every hour, twice a day, whatever you want. 
automated ordering of stock has has moved on as well and has got to the stage where linked to what we've described as single walk so operator at van uh, looks at their phone and works out what stock they need uh, some vending operators have taken that stage further and are actually pre-packing stock for snack and cold drinks machines so the operator when they load up their vans no longer uh, load up boxes of stock they load up pre-packed uh, trays of stock for the machines that they're visiting the following day. That's the sort of level of efficiency that uh, I think we are moving towards uh, and it's happening very fast. All that really is talking about operator efficiency uh, and uh, within that, if you're using data effectively and uh, you can also then look at what sites are the most profitable ones because that data is within the system, even down to what machines are profitable and your, your customer profitability comes out of that. So I believe that data can be used in a variety of ways described there to improve the efficiency and profitability of a vending operator. OK, I'm now going to move on to data reporting and that's okay for time so that's good so david described uh, in the last presentation the requirements for providing reports to government and whether they're coming or not and let's hope they do get delayed uh, because they're going to be a pain in the backside um, they would they may well appear so let's have a look at them and hopefully try and reassure you that that with the right management system you should be able to create reports to help you so the drs scheme david described it it is about 20p per bottle extra charge which in turn means you are charging your customers an extra 20p a bottle but you do need to account for those 20ps in both costs and sales and there is a vat implication now we had conversations with john and thomas at excel uh, as they were approaching this in scotland started to discuss ways in which that could be managed through a management system our belief is that it should be quite capable of being managed through reports through coding on on the products in your system uh, and therefore should be able to be done automatically not manually With extended producer responsibility, as David described, there were two separate schemes. I've done them in a slightly different order to the way he described them to the to the gang. Uh, but there's two, really. Uh, the first one is 10 plus employees where you do need to report on cups only. The second is uh, where there is a certain level of packaging uh, that equates to turnover tonnage to start with, but that David equated to numbers of coffee machines so if your turnover is a million and 25 tons of packaging which equates to around 200 coffee machines or it's 2 million and 50 tons and it's 400 coffee machines there are packaging types that need reporting on and the operators are liable to either report or pay the gun pay defra uh, dependent on where they are in those levels so with version one which is the vending operator with 10 plus employees uh, there is a need to report tonnage of cups and tonnage of cups used and tonnage of cups recycled and again through the management system it should be able to and i believe it is able to be shown automatically not manually and the other version where there is more uh, scheme more products to be covered and schemes and a need to report the tonnage dispatched to each country again there is more setup detail required within the backup system but once that setup is created and that can be done only be done when we know what the actual final scheme is then it should be possible to report on this information automatically. 
So I think what I'm saying at, at the end of this presentation is, yes, there's change coming. Um, there's two parts to the change. One is a growth in telemetry and cashless that allows data to be used in a much more efficient way for improving operator, uh, route operators and the back office efficiency. But also as we reach a stage where there is more data required to be provided to government bodies, then your your management system, I would suggest you want to look at a management system that does this automatically rather than you having the pain of doing this manually. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you for that, Robin. I mean, I have I, I have a question. I mean, obviously, um, there will be a requirement for, for reporting and um, in in different formats to different bits of, of government. Um, will most management systems be, be able to manage that and integrate with things like if people are using Sage or uh, other systems, or will someone have to? Will it be a, a like a resource requirement for someone to sit sit there and administer and pull all these these different elements together? David, there's no. Do you want to stop sharing as well now? Um, if you stop sharing, so. yeah. Um, there is no doubt that the 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 complexity of the requirements means that the setup within any management system will take time but once that setup it should be straightforward to then use it and manage it on ongoing okay. but the, i'm not i'm not at all understating the need for the setup because yeah without that then the report won't work and the setup has to be determined by each country's legislation. Yeah, it's like John was saying, if glass is going to be included in Wales and not in England, then yeah. that, will, that will require a tweak to the system rather than a resetting there by the sounds of things. You know, there'll be an overall amount of pain initially when people are having to look at all the different products, which of the six different types of packaging they sit into, what their weights are and how you manage that. Correct. But once that's in, it should be just pressing a button in theory. Uh, yeah, Press, <laughs> pressing the button may be oversimplifying it, but the the report <laughs> should be able to be created mm. uh, easily, more easily than having to do that all manually. Okay. And again, uh, when it comes to things like the deposit return scheme, uh, there was some question around VAT and accounting. Obviously, uh, HMRC uh, will want there to be VAT, but whether there will be and how that will have to be accounted for, uh, ultimately, we won't know until we see the structure, structure of the scheme. You're, you're totally right there. And, and mm. until that time, that's, that's, the, that's the bit you can't say how it's going to work yet. Mm. What you can say is there should be a way within a, a management system to be able to create the detail against each brand, against each product that allows you to create the reports. 